Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode 20 of my ongoing Space 1999 series. And in episode 20, we're looking at Space Brain, sort of a take on this old cheesy 1950s movies, uh, but uh, cheesy as any is anything or nothing like how I would describe this episode. Uh, there's nothing cheesy about this at all. Uh, first uh, first aired January 29th, 1976. Uh, is about right there. Uh, and this one, uh, before I get into it, uh, this uh, guest stars, you know, we talk about this every episode, right? Uh, the guest stars. Uh, Shane Rimmer, who plays astronaut Kelly. Now, I... I you might, if you remember Richard Donner's original Superman 2, uh, the controllers that are uh, there uh, in NASA uh, communicating with those up on the moon. He is like one of the main controllers who we see a lot, who gives probably the most dialogue in that scene, in that opening scene. So that's where I, I recognized him from. Uh, so basically, what do we have here in episode, episode 20, man? Uh, Space Brain. Uh, Charles Crichton directed this. Again, I think this is... Holy smokes, I counted them. I want to say four, no, not that many. Uh, he's directed a lot, a lot of these episodes and will, I think, even direct some more in a year or two. And we are only, I think, four, four away after today. We're four away. By the way, today is Halloween and uh, I don't ever rarely, or rarely do I ever do my reviews on a Monday, but I had a half day today and I wanted to do all three of my reviews. If you didn't know, I also am doing an, uh, an Italian horror series on my own channel, but I also body bags every Wednesday. But I wanted to do everything today so I could say Happy Halloween. It is October 31st when I am recording this. Of course, everything gets dropped on Wednesday. And uh, so we'll be a few days in already, but hope your Halloween was awesome. And uh, hopefully uh, the week is carrying on the same. Uh, so what do we got here, man? So the opening, the opening few minute or so it's a quiet evening i don't think we've ever really seen this yet quite like this uh, everyone is sort of doing their own own thing just having real quiet time um and i think koenig is uh, wrapping up a puzzle in fact i think he does it in record time and he's about to rack out uh for a little bit and uh when of course he can't fall asleep for very long before our next disaster uh springs itself and it is uh, this entity of sorts. It's like, it's kind of like, a, I guess it is like a, a, a consciousness or a, a brain that is, you know, well, free of the construct of how we view a brain. It's sort of just as a consciousness floating through space. And we get this impression from this episode that it's not the only one out there. And that perhaps uh, how they, how they kind of show the, uh, the solar systems, the galaxies, that every aspect of it is sort of like how our body works, right? Planets or cells and, you know, so everything sort of builds up on one another and these sort of free floating brains, for the lack of a better way to phrase it, uh, you know, the idea is they, they perhaps like our brain controls our, our body, uh, it has, uh, it sort of controls aspects of galaxies and, and you know, systems, I guess. And so, you know, so anyway, so it comes in and it, it takes or, or it senses uh, uh, Moonbase Alpha is a threat because the two are on a collision course. The first Eagle one that goes up there to, uh, as a reconnaissance, which Shane Rimmer, or no, Shane Rimmer goes up on the second one. Uh, the first one goes up there, suddenly communication is lost, right? And they, they can't reach. And so they send up another Eagle. And before the Eagle can get too far, uh, a meteorite seemingly out of nowhere crashes into Moonbase Alpha come to find out it's the Eagle one that got a little too close to the brain and so the brain sort of as a you know like our body would send antibodies out or you know whatever to uh, to basically repel deal with the coming threat basically takes Eagle one and just crunches it right right down into just one big ball of metal and well, all the ingredients that go into constructing an Eagle One and the people inside. So everything is sort of, so once they come to the conclusion of what they're dealing with, 
Of course, you know, they uh, quickly call the second eagle back before it can get too close, but it's too late. Uh, Shane Rimmerhead, uh, the astronaut, was already out on a spacewalk trying to look, get in, you know, uh, uh, observe to see uh, where the other e or the eagle was. Uh, and of course, the alien or brain uh, thing here uh, starts to take hold of uh, Kelly and basically begin to control him. And when they get out of there and they get back to Moon Base Alpha, he sort of becomes the vessel for this space brain in order to um, search the computer banks and determine if there is a way of diverting the moon base from actually colliding. Now, of course, you got a lot of things going on. And of course, Koenig and them, you know, our heroes are trying to figure out, you know, what is going on. Eventually, he'll hook up, I think, with Kelly in sort of a, a, a mind symbiosis thing. And he will come to the understanding real quick that this brace brain is, uh, space brain is benevolent uh, in what it is doing. Uh, it's just, you know, self-defense trying to protect itself. Uh, through that, they come up with a plan to uh, potentially set off some nuclear charges to maybe divert the moon off just a little bit. Uh, but that, the floor, you know, pretty much gets, the rug pretty much gets pulled out from under that plan. And by the end, uh, by the end of the series, or by the end of the show, we're left with the imminent collision course, uh, which uh, I think, you know, for today, I think I'm just going to leave that in terms of what happens. We know the ultimate effect, of course, right? Because Moonbase is going to still be out there for many of the episodes uh, to come. Uh, but in terms of its impact with the space, uh, the space brain, well, I guess I'll just go ahead. Spoilers. Uh, you know, I don't know if we can really call them spoilers with a show that ran in the 70s. Uh, but the, the collision course ultimately does happen. And the space brain does everything it can to repel it. And ultimately, in the end, it does fail. And Space Moon Alpha, or Moon Base Alpha, plunges through it and comes out the other side, destroying this, this state of being or consciousness, whatever it ends up being, uh, destroys it. But the implication is interesting. The implication is if this thing truly was sort of the, uh, the, the, the galaxies or whatever, this consciousness, controlling consciousness, basically what has happened now is, is anarchy, complete anarchy. Whatever planets, orbits, uh, black holes, you name it, whatever this thing perhaps might have controlled has lost that state of control and is now just all over the map. And so there, that is an interesting implication, and they don't really get into it much, but only suggesting. But again, it's sort of like this ongoing thought of where, what is the state of the Earth right now? You know, without its moon in its orbit, has the Earth completely just fallen into, you know, chaos and disorder and anarchy and ultimate death? Uh, we don't really know, at least not in this point, and I have no idea in year two if they ever try to explain it. Or by the end of this, I can't remember. See, I can't really remember by the end of year one. I don't think we're really told what it is because it's kind of hard for them to know anyways um, what is happening. But so, you know, some of the things, some of the scariest things Space 1999 does is it throws out suggestions or these seeming implications of certain choices. And then it allows you to just sit back and ponder and think about it and go, yeah. Maybe it's a good thing we don't ever see it because we just continually allow it to think about it. And so we we, we come to know real quick that uh, Koenig and Victor and Helena, uh, Kano and the rest of them, um, you know, the, their wayward travel, you know, is having an impact, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, there is a suggestion I was reading in um, Kenneth Murs uh, and his commentary. He suggests that fans have uh, pointed out that perhaps this uh, space brain uh, this 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 consciousness is kind of what is behind moon base alpha that seems a little hard i don't know i, I really don't buy into that in terms of, of overarching uh providence you know that koenig uh points to on occasion uh because what what level of consciousness to that high degree would basically allow for a collision of itself um i, I just i don't know it's it is interesting thought but uh, I think there's something much, much greater than that going on here. So anyways, 
Again, Shout Factory put out a beautiful, beautiful box on this year one, year two, and a supplemental disc. And the guy who wrote this book is in, a, is at least in a couple, I think, documentaries on, on here. One in which he shows off his Space 1999 collection. And, uh, but anyways, it's a beautiful, beautiful box set. Last time I checked, it was only around 60 bucks. Well worth the purchase. Uh, it is just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic show to get into. And we are only about four away uh, from finishing up year one. And then, as I said, I'll take a little break and then I will dive into year two and, uh, you know, and head on into that. And that will be fun because that will be literally first time watches for me. I, I kind of went through all of year one and then I decided, hey, I want to do this thing. So I have not seen any. Now, as a kid, I probably did, but I really can't remember. So anyways, here in episode 20, just a handful away from wrapping this first year up. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I've had a fun time just going through and looking at it a little bit more closely with a more critical eye. And some of that, of course, is helped with uh, by this guy, and his reference guide. And so uh, I'm just having fun doing this, and I hope you're having fun following after. Anyways, as always, we end these things off with Go Bills.